Hello and welcome to another episode of GM Talks. This uh, time we will look at a technical masterpiece from 1963. I think it's one of the games that everybody should know. It made a huge impression on me when I was a young aspiring player. I was used to only winning by people blundering or uh, you, you saw some combination in two moves and uh, or you launched an attack on the king. And here was a guy who was just quietly maneuvering around with the pieces and winning against the reigning world champion. So saddle up and let's have a look. Uh, this is technical chess. We will uh, have a lot, lot of that about that because uh, I don't think it's very well uh, covered anywhere. Uh, so I think I can maybe teach you something. Uh, Petrosian is uh, white, it's 1963, and it's the fifth match game, and it's the first game where the coming world champion wins. Uh, he was a very strong player in 1963. C4, good move. One of the best, among the three, four best moves. Um, and uh, we have the Grunfeld, uh, and Bart Winnick, who's black, uh, was a big expert on the Grunfeld. He played something like the Grunfeld or the Dutch, mostly, or some Semislav, uh, like the Bart Winnick variation in the Antimaran. Um, and, and he was, a, of course, a great connoisseur of the openings, um, and he liked sort of scientific uh, dynamic play. Uh, Petrosian was uh, known as, as the master of prophylactic chess, uh, just preventing people's counterplay before they even <laughs> realize they have to get counterplay. Um, and and of, uh, uh, very strong technical players. He was also, which is a little bit unknown, he was a very strong tactical player. Uh, he is very good at with small combinations, and we will see that in this game, which is actually a big part of uh, technical chess. Karpov is also good at that. And he plays the quiet variation. Uh, you're not after an advantage. You just want to get a game, get your pieces out, uh, control the dynamics of, of, of black play and pcb 2 uh, I think the main try for an advantage is either b4 or, um, or take on d5 and bishop c4. Uh, this is very quiet, bishop e2. Uh, and black probably should play c5 here. Uh, this is... Um, is 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 a, is a good move and i think black equalizes you you'll get something like a terrace in re reverse and the terrace is, is is slightly worse for black uh, in, in normal circumstances and here it's just equal so but it's of course playable if you like an isolated pawn but we need takes on c4 this is not something very common and uh, it does not gain ma many followers uh, since that time um and Take back, c5, attacking the center. Uh, black could, of course, castle here, uh, white could castle, and uh, will uh, transpose into some sort of a terrace. Um, but it makes more sense to, to gain space in the center. And the best move here is probably knight d7 or knight d8, uh, trying to get a knight to d6 and covering um, uh, the, the squares here. I, I think. White is better, but it's not much. Uh, but black decides to uh, to try to solve his problem immediately with e6, uh, and that is probably a slight mistake. Uh, in in general, maybe not in in absolute terms, but in uh, principal terms, because um, black is accepting a weakness for no reason. And this is something I, I learned uh, the hard way playing against strong Russian grandmasters or grandmasters in, in, is that you should not give away anything ever without you having to. So uh, it's a bit like that uh, movie three with uh, defending the, the Spartan and that they say, um, give them nothing and take from them everything. And it's a little bit like that. You should think like that. Whenever you think uh, playing a grandmaster that that it's probably not as bad as it looks. It's always much worse. Uh, so don't give away anything. He takes, of course, giving a clear weakness, clear plan. Take back, and uh, pieces are exchanged. Black has um, an open F, F file. It's not so important. He has a slight, is a, is a majority on the queen side, which could be a bad factor. But he also have three pawn islands versus two for white. So white has a clearly, slightly, but clearly better structure. 
uh, and uh, we will see Petrosan use that mas masterfully. Also, Black has an isolated e pawn. He he's he's betting that his uh, dynamics will um, will make up for it. But um, if he's not playing very well, then it will not. And this is uh, is the problem with Black's position. He has to play extremely well to not be worse. While White can just move around. Okay, king e2, normal move um, away from the center. Here probably knight d5 is the best move, uh, trying to open for the for the bishop immediately uh, because now it's prevented by rook d1. And uh, and we see that uh, here white is, is probably already slightly better uh, because after this he can exchange a rook and he likes to have one rook less because he has the better structure. So when you have the better structure, a general rule is to exchange pieces uh, and and sort of getting to the pawn ending yeah, in principle. In principle, and White can go to knight g5, uh, forcing the rook to a passive square. And the other rook here attacking c5. We see that this guy is attacked, um, and also he's sort of blocking. Uh, the pawn on a white square, which is also good. Attacking c5. Black defense. And uh, the pressure from the bishop here is, of course, uh, very annoying. We will see that one of the things Petrosian is very good at is playing around pieces, making pieces that looks good just being uh, not good. <laughs> uh, he's he's very he, he's very skillful at, uh, at that, and we'll see this in the game uh, while he makes this bishop on g7 shooting into the air. Uh, and this is a, a very common threat for very strong players. They're very good at making your pieces bad. Uh, rook b1, just covering the pawn, getting ready to, to move the bishop. Knight b4, and here comes a small uh, tactics, which is typical of Petrosian. Bishop d2, and um, of course attacking the, the knight, we would like to, to, to take that and uh, put it on black squares. Please notice that uh, all these uh, guys over here, they're all on black. Uh, this is the same color as black's bishop, which make it possible to um, that this bishop might be slightly bad in the future. Uh, Petrosian is, is definitely thinking about that uh, at the point here. Um, okay, he's attacking the knight. If it takes here, then uh, White will um, will change his uh, advantage uh, into another kind of advantage. He will go like this here, and um, it's improved in structure very much, and improved the activity, and he will get the pawn back, and the b pawn will be weak. The knight will be a monster on e4, and uh, White will have good chances of getting a kingside attack. And here we see another thing. When when you have uh, a slightly better position, you're, you should not be afraid for of transformations as long as you get an exchange commission. So here White, uh, unfortunately, the, the queen side was sort of cleared, but uh, White got a uh, clear advantage in, in for, for, for these, all the exchanges. And here White is just much better and it will be very, very nasty for black to defend this. Okay, he went to to d5, and uh, now notice now that which uh, color white is is of course aiming to put it on white and keeping black's pawn on black. Uh, very common. Um, and here, b3, all uh, standard stuff. White has a slight, very slight advantage, not much. Um, Rook c1, getting ready to maybe attack this. Um, here, why Black makes a, a little but but clear mistake. He plays Bishop e7, keeping the knight out of this square. Um, but he could always defend that in some way with Rook, with the Rook or something. So that was probably uh, bad, um, especially since uh, after Bishop e7, White has. The good move b4 because of the pin on this rook. And black doesn't want to be settled with another isolated pawn. That will give, uh, make his, his pawn islands into four. 
so he probably has to advance, but this pawn uh, is is going into uh, en enemy territory without enough support um, and, and will eventually be lost. Uh, c4, b5. Please notice again that it's very nice to have the pawns uh, uh, fixed on black squares on the queen side. This is what you want. You want uh, you don't want the black to play a6 and b5 because then black would be very very much in the game and b4 would be weak. So of course you advance. King f7 is the next move. And bishop c3. And um, And they, in the notes to the game, uh, Averbeck comes up with some small suggestions for black and saying it's not so bad, but when you look deeper, it, it is slightly bad for, for black all the way. Uh, here, of course, you're threatening knight d2, so he's trying to, to keep the pawn alive. And here we see another advantage of white's position. Uh, he, the, the rook end game is good for white because the c pawn will be lost and and white's king will be very active. Uh, if you take uh, king takes and, and king will go to c3, rook will go to d2, d4 and so on. You can see some like this and here, here, here and white gets in here and threatening rook d4 and after something like rook e5, rook d7, black is, is much worse. You could also go just go e4 and <laughs> e4 is probably even much better because and <laughs> there's a there's a mate with rook d5. Uh, that's kind of hard to 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 avoid. So the, the rook ending is not is, is not working for black. He has to to find another way um, and seeking uh, activity. Um, so he, he has to go forward without just not losing the pawn for for nothing. And four back, king goes in, and now the c pawn is lost. Um, and here it goes rook d. Please notice that if he goes rook d2, uh, clever tactics. You should always look for this kind of tactics. White cannot take the rook, but he just goes king b3, and uh, the pawn will fall. Anyway, so doesn't help anything. So rook d1, and here goes the pawn, and. And here we see another uh, big feature of uh, Petrosian. He sees that, okay, uh, white's, black's rook is very active. It's allowed to be reactive, but I want my own play. And at the, at the moment, this guy out here is completely out of the game. So um, why not launch an attack? This is something you will notice that strong players, somehow uh, how they always seem to, to push the, the enemy miss king back. And uh, getting at an attack. So knight e4 and king d4, and the idea, of course, to um, to go here and uh, becoming a powerhouse on 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 the the seventh rank, uh, just giving away the the g pawn because you get the h pawn and the a pawn. So it's it's a pretty nice exchange. Goes d7, and here, okay, it's time to, to just. And notice that it's another principle in the endings do not rush. Uh, if g4, then h5 will give black a uh, pass pawn. You can just see that here. There's no reason to do this. Um, it might still be, be better for, for, for white, but you don't want a fussy race when you're in a much better position. You want a clear cut nice lines, pushing black back. And in general, uh, technique is the same as control. So you want to keep control. Uh, and basically, Petrosian just wants to lullaby black to his death. D3. Here comes the king. And of course, we know this, we all know that you have to save, keep the king safe, and wandering around with the king is not a good idea. But in the ending, everything changes. Here, the king is an F part of the attacking force, um, and it is going to could do a Pac-Man on, on Black's pawn on the, the king side in the, in the future. Just gobble up those pawns. Here, okay, here it comes, and it's totally safe here. Nothing, nothing to see here. 
e5, this was not part of the plan, rook c6. Again, again, going for domination, it's a very typical Petrusian style. Maybe uh, knight f6 is coming, maybe knight c3 to d5 is coming. Uh, black doesn't really have a good move. Okay, it was a king. If you go rook a5, then g4 and rook e6. So, and we see again the same method, keeping the domination, pushing the king. Again, and this is another type of the small combination that is sort of spread all over the games of uh, great positional players like uh, Petrosian, Kramnik, uh, Karpov. Um, you you see that ah I can I can take a pawn, but then of course it's poisonous. Uh, and here, if if you take an a4, this would be a big mistake. Knight c3 and knight d5, winning the bishop. So he has to go into defensive mood. Rook d1. The knight takes another route. Oops. And uh, here, black resigned. His pieces are reduced to uh, passivity. He will lose all his pawn on the king side. And uh, look at the, the, the once proud uh, Grunfeld bishop on c7. It's, uh, it's just totally out of the game. So this was a very nice uh, masterpiece, and uh, not many people do this to Botvinnik, or did this to Botvinnik. Actually, no one else, as far as I remember. So um, this made a big impression, and uh, well, it's, it's hard to play this way, but it's not impossible. And uh, we'll see some other games uh, with, with the technical asp aspect of chess, keeping control in the near future. Bye-bye for now.